So welcome everyone. Today is our All Life Matter call with um, Dr. Um, Alex Lloyd, Dr. David Peck. I'll be assisting them. And uh, I want to share this disclaimer before we start. This presentation is for education and informational purposes only. And once we're going to be, and, and since we're going to be talking about issues of health and well-being, we wanted to make sure you understand this information is not intended to heal or cure anything. Everything in the presentation are the opinions of Dr. Alex Lloyd, Dr. David Peck, myself, Johanna Chan, or you if you choose to share. You should always check with a licensed healthcare provider about any specific health concerns you may have. All right, guys, take it away. Thank you, Johanna. Uh, the guy in the middle is Dr. David Peck. I'm Alex Lloyd. And we are trying to help a million to a billion people increase their emotional well-being by 100% or more. And we believe we can give you for free what you need to do that. Uh, I'm sorry, I've got a, a, a wet spot on my shirt. Um, I, uh, I'm kind of emotional. I just heard from a client who uh, just got back from the doctor and her um Stage four met metastatic breast cancer is completely gone, no trace. And um, so I'm a little I'm a little emotional. I'm sorry. Um, but anyway, the the topic for today, uh, we try to we try to talk a little bit about a life issue, and then we do a, a custom intervention uh, to heal those issues. Uh, and the, and we do it right here on the call with you in real time. And all these calls are posted so you can back and go back and find ones that are for whatever issue uh, you're most interested in. But today we're going to talk a little bit about life vows. Um, Dave, you want me to start or you want to start? Um, I guess I could start. Sure. Go ahead. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And I just, just to start again, I just want to reiterate what, Alex would say, I'm not counting the million or billion. My take on this is that, and this comes from Alex's writings, we have been programmed in a fear-based way. And essentially we're slaves to our emotions. And this is very much about spreading awareness so that we can be free from that emotional slavery. And these are the methods, these are the issues, these are the tools to use on these particular issues in order to get that freedom. So yeah, this this week was is is life vows. And 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 I and just one other thing is that I am a seasoned long-term in the system physician and scientist who spent 30 years taking care of patients, writing grants, doing science, but also taking care of patients, take Cutting, learning how to cut out gallbladder and colons, and then ICU work, et cetera. And I come to the other side because what I've realized is that, and, and not to say, I mean, I have to be honest, I think from a medical stand, standpoint, we've totally missed the boat. Even when it comes to stress, like now we're, we're, we're stressing, stressing, stress more, but even the stress thing, it's not just don't go meditate. Just I mean, just don't go, you know, try to relax more. Go to the source of the stress and heal the stress and get it over with. And that's what we're talking about. Amen. OK, so anyway, the, my life vow, I've talked about this before. And, um, you know, it has to do with, um, um, you know, something that happened very early on. It's it's personal, but I'm willing, uh, happy to share it. You know, I, I was maybe uh 11 or 12 years old and uh was at the swimming pool there was a girl we'll call her donna g she was probably the prettiest girl in i don't know sixth grade or fifth grade whatever grade it was and we're there and we're at the pool and we're playing tag and i'm all excited you know here i am and i come back to tell my dad you know oh listen that and what does my dad do and it wasn't i don't think it's because he wasn't like trying to be mean again it was probably his programming that drove him to do this but he basically humiliated me. He made fun of me like, oh, look at this little David. You know, he's everyone. Come on, look how David's in love and all this. So from that point on, I made a life vow that I didn't even really realize that it was a life vow until, you know, Alex was able to, you know, open my eyes to it that, you know, I never 
talk to him about any girls that I was, you know, involved with or anything like that. And I really, I, you know, I, I hurt myself over the years, you know, because I was essentially afraid of being humiliated. So I wasn't able to pursue the, the people, the, the, you know, the individuals that I really wanted to. So it was a lot of settling for convenience and, you know, some not so, I mean, they were sort of, I think it would probably be not such a great love life, honestly, you know, but, um, uh, but as a result of, of healing and certain experiences, I've really been freed now. So, you know, now able to, to love, but, but, but just the fact that, you know, that one interaction, you know, I mean, I had many interactions with my dad. I, my dad was a great guy, actually, in many ways. I mean, when I think about what he did and he raised us, he came through the Korean War, you know, he struggled in America as a, you know, there were no other Asians in, in America at that time anyway. But just that that he would, you know, as a, at a 11 year old or 10 year old kid, you know, and all excited and everything. And just that he said these things, you know, and just, it was just one day, it was just one event. And yet this drove my entire life. And this is what's happening, you know? And so we're asking you identify that life vow that you have that's holding you back and then heal it. And now we have the tools. I would have to say in the past, we didn't really have, the, I'm, I'm not sure, but I don't believe that we really had the tools. I've been in, I was in psychotherapy. I had therapy. You, okay, you identify, okay, here's the issue. But I still feel the same way every time I'm in that same situation. You know, maybe I'm in front with a pretty girl or someone and I, you know, I have to keep away, you know, just keep her away, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah. Was I used to cut my hair off, you know, and keep all the girls away from me. That kind of, just that one event, you know? Yeah. And so, so find it and find, you know, and then, and free yourself, get free with these things. So I'll pass it to Alex now. Okay. Um, mine was my weight. Um, I started to school in kindergarten thinking I was, that life was great. I didn't have any issues that I know of or knew of at the time. I love my parents. My parents were great. I love my brothers. My brother was great. We weren't rich, but we were, you know, low middle class, middle class. So, you know, we weren't starving and we were rich to me. And then I go to school and I find out and I'm start and I start being made fun of. For the very first time in my life, I've never experienced that before, being made fun of. And it was primarily about my weight. And um, it was absolutely awful. It changed my personality from extroverted to almost introverted. Um, it caused me, like David, to not do certain things and stay away from certain things just because of the fear of being made fun of. And so when I was in junior high, I was about 12 years old and I made a life vow and I remember it. And um, it was basically, I am willing to do anything. I am willing to give up anything in my life as long as I'm not made fun of for my weight anymore, okay? And so I started running six to 12 miles a day I started doing um, uh, a minimum of 200 to 300 push-ups a day, about double that, five or 600 in sit-ups. And we're talking, I never missed a day, ever, ever. And this went on for 15 years and it worked, okay, it worked. I lost weight, I became slim and trim, and David, I, I remember, as soon as you said it, I remember that, the prettiest girl in sixth grade who wouldn't even look at me. And if she did, she would have made fun of me probably. But then when I made the life vow and started working out and lost the weight, I started dating cheerleaders and homecoming queens. And it was unbelievable. And I thought, this is the best thing that's ever happened to me in my life. It was just incredible. But then the life vow started to take on a life of its own. And fast forward about 15 years later, I'm married to Hope and she is ready to divorce me 
because she just cannot stand living with me anymore. I am so obsessive and extreme about everything, but the main thing was this working out thing. It had become a religion to me, and all of a sudden, I had this fear to the point of panic. If I missed a single day working out, I mean, it is so distorted. It was, it was like an anorexia thing. I could get home at one or two in the morning and be exhausted. I still have to go run. I have to. Now, if you had asked me, why do you have to? I'm not sure I could have answered that question then. Now I know it was this phobia over... <laughs> What, what it really was is if, if, I don't, if I don't run tonight, people are going to be making fun of me tomorrow. <laughs> now, that's ridiculous. We yeah. all know it's ridiculous. I didn't have an ounce of fat. There's no way that could have happened. But ladies and gentlemen, I felt it. Now, I probably wouldn't have said that out loud because I would have known it wouldn't make sense. But it is absolutely what I felt and it ruled me, and I bowed down to it and worshiped it, and it was horrible. And I almost lost everything I had, including my wife, who I love dearly, because I made that life vow. So look, at it, look in your life at something that's not working for you, okay? Do you read books too much? Do you watch TV too much? Are you not able to eat the way you want to eat to be healthy and balanced, okay? So there's something that's not working for you, and no matter what you try, it doesn't seem to work. 90% chance you've got a life vow related to that. That is sometime in your past when because of extreme pain, you didn't necessarily make a formal life vow. I didn't either. Like, okay, I am making a life vow that I, no, 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 that, that never happened. And that usually doesn't happen. It's just, it's just a, a thought that can happen one time, but then you go with it. Like, I'll give up anything if people just don't make fun of me for being fat anymore. And then, oh, wait a minute, I can start working out. Maybe that'll work, okay? And I did, and it looked great, but because it was a life vow, it turned into a monster that nearly <laughs> ate me and everything in my life that I cared about, okay? So if you've got something that you're not sure, why can't I do this? Or why can't I stop doing this? Chances are you've got a life vow that, and until you kind of renounce and heal that life vow. It's going to keep going because that is like a major, when you made the life vow, it was almost like with life and death kind of pain sort of thing. So once you make it, it is locked in until you intentionally renounce that and change it and then start living in balance. Okay. So, um, yeah. this, and, and, and the majority of people that I've worked with over all these years, more people than don't have a life vow and they mm -hmm. almost never know they have it. Okay. They just think, I just can't get that done or I can't stop. David, what were you going to say? Yeah. No, I wanted to say this. It just, I just thought of a, a parallel in that whereas you were you were driven to do something in my case i would make excuses right like, not that's it. yes but it, it was the same thing i was avoiding yeah. like it was the opposite but the same thing yeah that's so. right that's right it can be either one it can be doing something or not doing something but it's not what you really want it, it, right. it you're, you're you're kind of making a deal with the devil so to speak Okay. 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 I will give up if I can just have this. Okay. Well, brother, be careful because that deal <laughs> may end up costing you everything like it almost did me until I renounced it in my, in my late twenties. 
And I made that life vow when I was like 12. Okay, so we're talking 15 years of my life ruled by that life vow. So Dave- Mine Dewey, lasted for 40 years. Four, <laughs> mine 15. And, 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 and a lot of my clients, it's their whole adult life. Okay. Right. And, and, and they'll be amazed. They'll, they'll change that. And all of a sudden they can do it. The thing that they were never able to do before. And they're like, wow. That, I mean, this seems easy, but I've tried for years, <laughs> you know, well, it does seem easy. Once you find that life out and renounce it, heal it, and then ship. So, okay. Hey, uh, yeah. You want to, do uh yeah. code okay. or you want me to do it? I got I can I got a code for it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we're gonna we pray, we request that all destructive negative cellular memories, unhealthy habits and addictions, false limiting beliefs, and all relationship issues related to any life vow that we made, that it be found, opened, and healed through love, light, truth. And God. Okay. And the first position is left hand temple, right hand Adam's apple for healing of life vows. Second position, left hand temple, right hand bridge. It's like brain sterilization. <laughs> I love yeah. that. Yeah. Okay, third position, both hands bridge. Okay, fourth position, both hands, Adam's apple. Okay, back to the first position, left hand temple, right hand Adam's apple. Okay, second position, left hand temple, right hand bridge. Third position, both hands bridge. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, fourth position now. I made a mistake is both hands in the jaws position is the fourth position. I'm sorry about that. Fourth position is both hands jaws. Can't believe you made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> First one I know of. <laughs> Okay, back to the first position, left hand temple, right hand um, Adam's apple. I need to say when I don't make a mistake. That's it. <laughs> no, Al. Okay, that's good. That's two full cycles. Two full okay, cycles. let's go to uh, custom acupuncture points. Let's start with side of the hand. Pimples under the nose, little finger, collarbones, eyebrows, index finger under the eyes under the nipples, thumb, middle of the chest, under the eyes, under the arms, thumb, middle finger, Sore spot, chin, 9G, eyes open, closed, open, eyes down to the left, down to the right, circle your eyes, circle back the other way, mm -hmm. one, two, three, four, five, mm -hmm. okay. Please activate governing and conception vessel four times in a row. Four times in a row. If it hurts, you're pressing too hard. It's called yin and yang by most people. Calms the central nervous system. All right, now custom healing centers. Let's start with heart. Please open and harmonize. Throat, please open and harmonize. If it hurts, you're massaging too hard. Base or root on the pubic bone, please open and harmonize. Crown, please open and harmonize. Under the belly button, please open and harmonize. Forehead, please open and harmonize. Middle of the stomach, please open and harmonize. And then I would do left hand, forehead, right hand, brain stem for about two minutes. Just relax, deep breaths from your stomach. Don't try to make anything happen. Just, if anything, get out of the way and let your body, mind, and spirit do what they know how to do to heal the source of this. Okay, both hands over the heart, slow, deep breaths, one after the other. Let the code process. When you're ready, um, take a look at the zero to 10, see, note any change. 
but I would also look at it about 30 minutes from now when it should be better. And let me say one other thing, Johanna, and then we can open it up for comments and questions. Um, I wanted to give you a little uh, sort of, you remember the sentence diagrams in English class, you know? This is sort of a life valve diagram. Here's kind of how life valve goes. I will give up blank if I can have blank. That's it. I will give up or do this if I can have this change in my life that is this. And, okay. and, and would that be something like not being humiliated or not being yeah. made fun of? Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, if I can just not be humiliated again, right. I'm never speaking to my dad again about a girl. If yeah. I could just not be humiliated again. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a life vow. Absolutely. Okay, Johanna, do we have any comments, questions? Yes, we have one hand up. And any, if anyone on the phone call wants to uh, uh, share something or ask a question, press star nine on your phone, or you could type in a question if you're on the internet. So we're going to open the line for April. Hi, April. Hey. Hi, I was looking for my unmute box. So yeah, I was just gonna give you one example from my life and that was um, actually um, someone that was close to me and um, they were they had a health issue and there was a treatment I've, or I or at least I believe this was a life out. So they they were doing a treatment, and I guess they were tired, you know. And they were like, "I'm going to give it six months," and it just kind of hit me when they said that. And I was like, I was thinking, no, six months or else what? Are you just going to? Because it was, you know, this was like for their heart, you know. So that's why that's why I think it was a life. And then they, you know. It was not long after that that they passed. So, yeah, that's why when we talk about the life vows, I I tell people too. I'm I'm like I just posted something on Facebook. I was like, please let God choose. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, great comment, April. Thank you. All right, April. Anyone thank else? You. Um, let me see if we have any questions in the Q&A. I don't see any other hands up. Um, Susan is is suggesting, um, well, this, she says, love the life vows, Dr. Alex and Dr. David. They can lock us in when we may not even be aware of them or realize we've made that vow deep down or when very young. And may I offer grief and its impacts being the ah. theme for the All Lives Matter to come. Yeah, how about, how about next week, Dave? Grief. Yes. Yep. Yeah, Susan, next week, grief. Great, great, great suggestion. Yeah. Okay, and I don't see any other hands up. Oh, wait, yes, we do. Okay, hold on. Marilyn. Marilyn, your line, if you want to. Have I unmuted myself? There you yeah, are. I can hear you. Um, interesting doing the coding. I'm not aware of a life foul, but I felt anger coming up. So I think I must have one. I'm protecting it. Yeah. So, so what I would do, I would say, okay, what have I been angry about in my life, especially early in my life, to the point that maybe you would think, man, I would do or give up almost anything if I just don't have to deal with this anymore. Yeah. See, it, see makes, if you can find something like that related yeah. to that. Thank you. That makes perfect sense. All right. And, and, and these things are amazing, guys, because I've seen so many people try things for three and four decades of their life. I mean, medication, supplements, meditation, all kinds of stuff. Nothing works. They find and resolve their life vow and everything starts healing automatically. 
Amazing. Hi. Okay, we have another April S. I'm gonna. Um, we have two Aprils. Yeah. We need. Uh, do we have two uh, Mays and <laughs> June? June's, yeah. We call them the double A's. That's what you can name us. Um, so I'll be April too because April Gibson's been calling in longer than I have. So when you talk about life vows, are you? Is that the same as a heart vow? When we have a yes, heart vow. Yeah, uh, I, and I, and I'll tell I tell you one that I, I I believe is positive. Okay, I had a really close friend. Well, still is a really close friend. One of my closest friends for the last thirty years, and his daughter was a basketball player, and was having really really bad chronic knee pain that they couldn't seem to fix. That was really affecting her ability to play which was really affecting her identity and worth and feeling good about herself and her life and all of that. So anyway, my friend started praying intensely that God would take away her knee pain and give it to him. And, um, and to me, that is a type of life vow. And sure enough, the next morning, his knee was killing him and she had no pain at all and and went out and played basketball like a star. Now, his knee pain went away in about two weeks, but for those two weeks, he was limping around everywhere. But to me, that's, that's a love life vow. I mean, he loved that other person so much. He was willing to say, I will bear that for them. Okay, so that can actually be a positive life vow. It's when it goes to the negative that it can really tie you up in knots and, and you not be able to figure out how to get untied. Does that help any April S? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, okay. because we do, we make our heart vows and they can be positive or negative. Yeah, absolutely. That's right, that's yeah. right. So positive ones I'm all for, but mm -hmm. not, not the negative. Okay. Well, thank you guys. Appreciate you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank and um, and I'm gonna have to go. Uh, love all you. Oh, just what the, the, what yeah. determines whether it's positive or negative is that the intention behind it, or what I the think, goal is? Yeah. Well, I think I think to me, I think to me that boils down to first of all, is this healthy or not? Now, mm. mine was unhealthy. But it was healthy friend, at the beginning. It was healthy well, at the beginning. Well, to a degree. But, and my friends who had the love-based life vow about his daughter, um, to me, that was an unhealthy one in, in one sense because he was saying, give me knee pain, okay? But the it was positively love-based and yeah. mine wasn't. Mine was selfishness-based. Mine was, I don't want to deal with this anymore. Right. You know, you're trying to avoid, you're trying tantrum. to avoid pain. You're yeah, trying to almost, avoid pain. Yeah, right. it's almost a temper tantrum. Okay. I'm sick of this. I'll do anything if I can just not have to be made fun of for my daggum weight again. Okay. <laughs> and, 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 you know, even though you, that's understandable because people were making fun of me and it hurts. Mm -hmm. It was still very selfish. And, 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 and by the way, really hurt hope after we got married and I was so obsessed with that. It, it really hurt her. And, and I felt horrible about that. So anyway, yeah, I got to go. Love you all. Love you, Allie. All right.